Good evening. My name is Thibaut. <coughs> I am the CEO of B2B. B2B is a payment institution license in France, and we decide to passport our license uh, all over the, the SEPA area. Uh, B2B is part of uh, a group called Rentabili Web, uh, which is listed on Euronex, so I'm not here to raise money. I'm here, in fact, to try to uh, explain you the way we're doing business, our DNA, and uh, the way technology can disrupt uh, the banking industry. Banks, traditional banks, are dinosaurs, and that's logical. That's logical because they are designed and they shape, in fact, their architecture to be completely resilient to any tectonic shocks. We don't want, the French banking system doesn't want to look like the Cyprus one, for instance. And so that's logical. What we do believe uh, at B2B is that the banking industry is basically facing exactly the same issues as the telcos in the uh, years 2000, for instance. Uh, at that time, France Telecom had as a monopoly, and uh, the French banking industry is shaped as a monopoly today. Uh, at that time, France Telecom has many, many engineers, but very few developers. And that's exactly what bankings or banking uh, uh, companies are facing today. What we do believe, basically, is that payment is not anymore a question of techniques. It's not anymore a question of pipes. Everyone is able, with some developers, to build and, uh, and to shape his own architectures. In fact, uh, it's a question of data. And data is definitely a marketing driver. So why do a listed company consider as a fintech one? Just because fintech, basically, it's a mix of different expertise. It's a mix of developers, of course, with team from the web. And the web is definitely the playground of statisticians. So it's a mix of developers. It's a mix of banker, that's why I'm wearing a tie and I have a jacket. It's a mix also of statisticians. And what we try to create at B2B, in fact, we try to develop our expertise on both types of data. The data of a payment gateway, what we call the PSP, the payment service provider, and we have this expertise. And we are also an acquirer so that means that we are able, in fact, to manage all the authorization and uh, all the clearing systems. Uh, these data are completely different, and usually in France and in Europe, uh, different companies are managing these data. And these different companies, they never speak to each other. I mean, Worldline is talking to Worldline, and BNP is talking to BNP, and usually they never share this data. What we try to do is to be on both parts, and by accumulating all of these data, we are able, in fact, to increase conversion rates and to optimize fraud. What we have done, in fact, when you want to, um, to, uh, to be present on such a huge market which shuts dinosaur um, you have to understand the value chain. And this is the value chain, in fact, of the acquiring business. You can see on all the value chain that there is two types of players, the PSP, payment gateway, and the banks. The one who is dealing, is dealing the data, is dealing the cash. And on the value chain, oh, sorry, you can see that, in fact, some parts are made by the acquirer, and some parts are made by the PSP. And you can see, I'm not sure if you read correctly, but if you, if you see all of this, this is kind of things that people steaming from the web are able, in fact, to optimize. We collect data, but what for? Our objective, in fact, is to increase revenues of e-merchant and merchants thanks to this data. What are we able to do? You know that in France, there is the conversion rate on uh, the average conversion rate on e-merchant in France, according to FEVAD, which is the, the e-commerce professional association, is less than 3%. In any shops, the conversion rate is 50%. What we do believe is that if we work on this 2.7%, to be precise, we can make 
any merchant more revenue with the same traffic. And so we are able, in fact, to increase his revenues, one basis point, two basis point, three basis point. And keep in mind that if you are able, in fact, to upgrade by two or three basis points the revenues of an immersion, that means that maybe it's five to ten basis points on his ABDA margin. And usually immersion, they don't earn a lot of money. Otherwise, all of them should be listed. That's the point. So what we try to do is to help them to make more revenue. How? By collecting data, I say that. But for instance, 3D Secure, the guarantee, the guarantee of payment, the liability shift, it works, but not so fine. Two days ago, between noon and 2 p.m., BNP was not able to send any single SMS. That means that for this period of time, merchant cannot process transaction of BNP holders. If you ask to merchant, mid-December, three French banks were unable to send any SMS due to technical problems during three days in the period of the end of the year, which is maybe the, the, the most dynamic one. So what we do, in fact, is we are able, in fact, to do selective 3D Secure. If you know your customers, maybe it's not a good idea to ask him all the time to dial an SMS or so. What we are able to do is to process in one click. What we are able to do, if the authorization is KO, maybe we can suggest the holder to fragment and to pay in different times without any additional fees. This is this kind of features that merchants are looking for today. You have, basically, you have two kinds of merchants. Some of them are looking at their cost structures. They want that they want the processing to be the cheapest. But some of them consider that payment is not anymore a question of technique and cost, and this is a marketing driver. And thanks to data, they are looking to get more revenues. This is what we have done, and this is the, the amount of um, processing we are doing on a yearly basis. So we start uh, two, three years ago, or two and a half years ago, and now we are on a yearly basis processing one billion euro. So it's good stuff, I think so, because in front of them, our competitor, uh, our competitor are banks, traditional banks, who are doing acquiring. But these people, they only do the acquiring part. And if they are doing also the PSP part, the payment gateway part, that means that they, they are using Atos, Worldline. And Worldline is a very fantastic company, but it's more an SSDZ than uh, definitely um, uh, a FinTech one. Two case study just to illustrate what I'm, uh, what I'm telling to you. First, Med.com. Med.com, this is one of the biggest uh, design uh, uh, company in um, selling uh, some stuff like this. Uh, chairs, uh, you know, you know you probably you know Med.com. It's doing something like uh, 5 million uh, euro uh, amounts. It's a UK company, and we are processing euro, we are processing pound for them. And usually, they previously work with Barclays, and they work with World pay one PSP plus one acquirer. Uh, they decide to work with us just because we mix the two expertise and we are able, in fact, to increase their revenues, their conversion rate, and optimize their fraud. So in Italy, it was the launch of the company. They said, I want to get the best acceptance rate. And we succeed to have 87% of acceptance. In France, huge problem of chargeback. Why? Because the basket price is maybe 500 to 800 euros, okay? And um, the objective was to reduce it. And we reduce it to uh, less than 0.1%. And just to compare, the average uh, ratio is 0.3 on internet in France. And in the UK, thanks to our fraud engine, we are able to uh, divide the, 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 the fraud uh, ratio uh, by 80%.
the fraud is maybe the things to which is very easy to understand the relevance to mix this expertise of payment gateway and acquiring business. Assume that a, a immersion is like a nightclub. In front of the nightclub at the door, at the entrance door, there is a guy. Usually he's much more stronger than me. And he decides who should let in him or not. You have a jacket? Okay, you can go in the discotheque. You don't have any jacket? I'm sorry. I'm going to say stop. But because he's a, he's a smart guy, he said, okay, I have to analyze data so the guy doesn't have a jacket, but he's with 10 girls. I'm going to let in him. Why? Because maybe they are not going just to drink one glass and to buy a bottle of vodka. And because there is 10 beautiful girls, maybe there is 50 other male guys who wants to go to the discotheque just to chat these girls. Um, <clears throat> so because he's clever, he's going to let this guy in. What happens once the guy is inside the discotheque? He doesn't know. Who has the information? The merchant, I mean the, 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 older, the owner of the discotheque, and the banker. Assume that this guy, in fact, they destroy everything in the discotheque. This is charged back. We've got this information, the merchant and the acquirer. The PSP in front of the door, they never that, knows that. And assume that the same guy with the same girls he changed the day after, he come back to the discotheque, he just changed his face. I mean, he just changed his pan, or he just changed whatever. But it's the same mail, it's the same IP, it's the same whatever, the fingerprinting of the device, it's, every, it's the same. So, because we are on both parts, on PSP side and acquiring part, we're able to say instantaneously to the guy in front of the door, don't let him again. And so it's quite easy to understand that if you mix this expertise, you can create a lot of added value service for your merchant. Another example, maybe, Alopne. What we say, okay, my pitch could be nice. My English is not so good, but the pitch could be nice. The fact is that I'm not sure you're quite a young company or a payment institution. It's, we are talking about financial flows. Okay, let's do an A-B test. This is the DNA of the company. Let's test. What we have done, we have done tests on advertising banner for years. Does the red convert more than the blue? I don't know. Let's, let, let's just test. And so Alopne decided in fact to send 50% of the mobile traffic to us, 50% to a couple, a combo of Atos Worldline and Credit du Nord. At the end of the test, he said, okay, you are going to increase my revenues by 4.5%, which is huge. So he decided to, to switch 100% of his traffic, of his mobile traffic, directly through our platform. Platform that we have developed uh, completely in-house, because if you are a, a fintech company, I do believe that you have to keep in-house what is your asset. And your asset is techno, that's all. As a conclusion, it just, it's quite very difficult just to gate. Um, I told you that uh, we are processing roughly on a yearly basis one billion at the end of last year. It means that in fact we just already gain 1.8% of the market share of the e-commerce e in France, which is quite huge. But these guys, they are bigger, they are fat of course, but they are bigger, they are very smart guy, et cetera, et cetera. So what we have to do as a fintech company is try to think out of the box. If we think like, if we think like traditional banks, we are going to lose the battle. If someone tell me in my team, yes, but Visa advises us to do blah, blah, blah. Okay, if we do not think out of the box, we're going to lose the battle. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thibaut. Do you have any questions for Thibaut? So you're, you're a credit card specialist, if I'm not wrong? Kind of. Yeah. yeah. And you mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that you also uh, operational in the whole SEPA area. Yeah. So my question is to know if uh, this is part of your strategy to integrate some new payment means, SEPA direct debit, SEPA credit transfer, into your uh, uh, B2B offer. That's a very interesting question because in France, to be honest with you, maybe more than 90% of the transactions are made with plastic cards. That's all. So we focus on 
what is the mainstream market. And we do things that we could optimize this mainstream market. But you're right, if I want to do business in Germany, I have to, to put inside the portfolio payment methods like Giropay, like Zofort, like ELV. If I want to do business in, uh, in uh, Netherlands, I have to implement uh, IDEAL, for instance. So what we are doing today, we have a the catalog, we have uh, CB, Visa, Mastercard, BCMC in Belgium, IDEAL, Vimi, the new, uh, the new wallet of Visa, many, many. And we have to upgrade uh, till the end of, the, of, the, of this year all means of payment available in Europe. The question regarding the SEPA new means of payment such as the SDD or the SCT, it's very interesting. We like this kind of means of payment because you don't have any chargeback. You don't suffer about, you know, your cards, or the availability of your cards, maybe two years or something like this. And as soon as, soon as you um, are working with merchant, uh, um, which business model is based on subscription-based model, it's very difficult. So one day we will implement all of these means of payment. But what is the business model behind? I mean, as an acquirer, we are taking percentage of every single transaction plus a fixed fee, plus all the added value service that we are developing. You want to um, parameter your uh, fraud rule engine, you have to pay for that. You want to benefit from the one click, you have to pay for that. You want to, to suggest and to provide um, a, a fragmented payment, you have to pay for that. And so this is the business model. On the SDD and the ACT, it's quite free for everyone. So I don't want to move the industry too fast, you know what? And that's why projects like Cepamel, projects like my bank, I don't know if you know these kind of means of payment, they're very interesting. But as a bank, because we are also a bank, I'm not going to move on a field where I don't know exactly where could I take money from the older or from the merchant. I don't want to make the older pay, I want the merchant to pay. So it could be the mandate to monetize, but no one has found so far the good idea. So that's why we focus on cards and in France, we've got a specificity, it's called the Groupement Carte Bancaire. We've got a local scheme. There is Visa, MasterCard, and Groupement Carte Bancaire. 90% of your cards are co-branded cards. Visa or MasterCard plus CB. That means that I can route the card, the transaction, either in one scheme or the other. And this is the way we are working on conversion rate. We analyze all the beans. The beans is the type of the, the first uh, numbers of your cards that help us to know exactly, in fact, what kind of customer you are. And we could decide to route the transaction either in a way or the other, according to two criteria: cost and conversion. If you have a um, co-branded CB plus MasterCard uh, card and the basket price is less than 15 euro, I can decide to send it directly to MasterCard, the interchange will be 0.1%. If I decide to send it to the French Card Bancaire scheme, I'm going to pay 0.3%. So we decide according to conversion or to price. Yeah, I actually have one. Um, <laughs> Since you operate in several countries, I have a question about regulation, not about the payment one, because you no, know, it, it's almost uh, unified in, a, in the SIPA area. Uh, it's more about the fact that you gather data and then you use it. So uh, do you have problems with this, with the local regulations uh, about gathering data? And does it de depend on the countries? Do you have some uh, more difficulties in some of the countries? And is it easier in others? What's your point about it? That's a huge issue. Uh, I don't know if you know companies like Threadmetrics and stuff like this, G2, all of these companies that in fact are analyzing every kind types of data from your device, from your mail, from etc, etc. And these guys tell, we are able in fact to reduce fraud and that's what the whole banking system wants. But there is some association like the CNIL 
who tell us that we don't have to use this data. It's crazy. And when the CNIL is going to us and tell us, hey, you don't have to use to, to play with this data, I say, why? Tracfin is asking me to know exactly the inflows and the outflows. So I must keep that data. On the other side, there is what we do with data and conversion. And you're right. This data belongs to merchant. So it's always a collaborative approach. I mean, if they send us 100% of the transaction, if they send us their own data in our big rule engine, the call to action that we are going to send him is much more precise. So that's why it's not a question with merchant who understand that he should bring many, many data to us. It's a question of regulation, CNIL. And have you seen what happened with the G29? The G29 is telling something, you know, like a press release, and then the CNIL, two hours after, is sending his own press release to say, yes, but we are not completely agree with that, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the option could be, okay, let's delocalize all of our data on the servers in the US, and the point is over. But that, that's not what we should do, because we are a French company, licensed by the French Central Bank, and we do believe it's, um, it's a key driver to convince big merchant. Because um, maybe I give you some, uh, yeah, some, uh, some our reference. We are processing Oscaro, the leader in the spare automobile. We are processing uh, uh, Winamax online, which is part of the, of, the, of the Iliad group. Last minute on the travel. Aquarelle, Netbet, Mountain Market, Bagelstein in carte présente, because we are doing carte présente and carte not présente. We could convince all of these guys to share their data and to, um, to play with their financial flows, if, if I can say that, only because we have to be the best in class in, ter in terms of uh, regulation. And keep in mind that a payment institution had exactly the same uh, obligation than traditional banks. Exactly the same. Thank you, Thibault.